based on the syllabus copy or uh, yes sir based on time table sir time table sir so in the time table they have mentioned it as 364 right yes sir yes sir it's okay okay so full screen is visible now right Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Before even we venture into, I think I have to start recording the session. Someone just uh, remind me if I had not started recording, please remind me. Okay. From next time onwards. So that we'll have a record of the lectures. Okay. Yeah. So before even we venture into this course, automobile engineering, can someone tell me what is the meaning of an automobile? What do you mean by, by an automobile? How do you define an automobile? Uh, a component with some mobility. Yes. Repeat. I mean. Uh, uh, a component with some ability, I mean mobility, able to move. A component with some mobility. So um, then, you know, there are several components with mobility. There are toy cars. Do you call them automobiles? Must there, are, there are several components that can that have mobility, right? Can you give me example of uh, any of the components that have mobility? I'm not able to immediately think. So, for example, water spraying machine, it is mobile, it, it moves. It is a component, it has mobility. Sir, a self-propelled vehicle. Hmm. A self-propelled vehicle. All right, good. What else? I'm just seeing what kind of definition you people can come up with. A self-propelled vehicle. So then, train is a self-propelled vehicle. Train does it come under the category of automobile? Yes or no? No. Sir. Why not? Why it is not automobile? Any other definition of automobile? Any of you can give? So ship. Yes. In general, a passenger vehicle is referred to as. Okay. What about ship? What about aircraft? Means of travel is by road. That's why it is. Ah. Okay. Yeah, more or less. So usually an automobile is defined like a self-propelled vehicle that runs on land. So now you can say um, train is also an automobile. That's true. But we don't consider train as an automobile because it has specified tracks on which it runs. Right? An automobile that we consider it runs on land, it, it just doesn't run on a certain track in which it is guided to run in a certain direction. So that's why we don't include train into automobile per se, uh, as far as the pure definition goes and as far as our consideration goes. Okay. So now what we will be discussing in this course, I mean, at least in this uh, introductory lecture or the first unit, you can call it, we will talk about how automobile is defined. Just now we defined it. The history of automobiles, where it all started, how it came into picture, then how do you classify automobiles? And then what are the different components of an automobile? So essentially, the topic four here, the components of an automobile is the entire course. So we'll be discussing the details of all the different components of the automobile in this course. All right. So automobile by definition is it's a self-propelled vehicle that travels on land. So automotive, you know, self and in motion that's how the name has come automobile 
So the power to run is supplied by engine or a certain prime mover. The prime mover now, you know, we have electric vehicles, so the prime mover can be a motor, which is powered by a battery, right? So it transport people or material from one place to other. It transport people from one place to other. It can even transport cargo. It can transport uh, material. So that's why it says people or material from one place to other. It is not just passenger. It can even transport material. Am I audible clearly to you all? Yes, sir. Is, is there is there any disturbance from my side? Noise or disturbance? Nothing. No, no sir. sir. Okay. Good. So. How many of you know the history of automobiles? When it started, how it started? What was the first self-propelled vehicle that was built? Any clue? It's a steam engine. Steam engine. Okay. Good. Why did you guys do some search on the internet and then tell me when it started? What was the first automobile or as as far as the definition goes that runs on land this kind of an automobile a car can someone tell me where it all started paris hmm? in paris paris what was the, who built it what was the first thing that was built more details if you simply say Paris what I'm supposed to understand more detail the three wheel steam carriage yeah correct so you're doing some homework I'm happy I'm, I want others to do that as well three wheel steam carriage he says anybody else it's nice Sangeet said three wheel steam carriage anyone else history of automobiles it's available online. You can refer and tell me. So, you know, the first one was built by Carl Benz. You know, we are all, I mean, we all know about Mercedes, right? How many of us are aware of the company Mercedes? Mercedes comes under which company? Go ahead, unmute and speak. Daimler. Daimler, right. So Mercedes comes under Daimler. Daimler is the parent company and Mercedes is one of the brands under that. And Benz is, you know, one particular model. Mercedes Benz is one particular model. And they have different models within that S class, E class, you know, GLS and so many different Maybach. They have a lot of varieties within that. So interestingly, the first automobile was built by Carl Benz in Germany in 1886. A three-wheel gas buggy, that which you see on the left side here, right? Yes. So this one. This one was the first automobile that was built, at least a usable one in, in the form which led to the further uh, development in the field of automobile is this one. So Daimler, interestingly, he also mounted an engine in a wooden bicycle in the same year and built a four wheel gas buggy, this one, in the next year. Slowly, you know, because the cycle had been existent for quite some time. All they tried to do was automate it or power it, self-propel it, power it with some prime mover, right? That's what they were trying to do. So that is where it all started. So it runs back to 1886. So how many years now? 1986 and exactly how many years? 1986 means uh, 137 or 38 years, right? 137 years. Is it 137 years? Quick calculation. 35. 135. We are in 2022 now. 136 years. 136, sir. 136 years. Okay. It's 136 years. 
so more than 100 years we have been living around with automobiles so then slowly you know we had uh, uh, in the us it started in 1893 then henry ford ford model t it's, it's 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 historically very relevant how many of you know about ford model t yes kartik says he knows anybody else knows ford model t so many people say why ford model t was so popular Ma mass produced vehicle first mass produced vehicle exactly it was the first mass produced vehicle so all the uh, assembly lines that you see in the car industry now ford model t started that before that they were all hand assembled and individually made but ford model t is historically relevant because it was the first ever vehicle to be manufactured on a modern assembly line this one ford model t so please remember if you are not a wheel enthusiast you should know about ford model t okay you can go and do some research on ford model t and see what they did at that time so that happened in 1908 and that paved the way for modern automobiles to come into picture right and today automobile industry is one of the world's largest economic sectors by revenue um what are some of the largest other largest uh, industry Can you tell oil me? and gas very good oil and gas is huge any any other industry automobile oil and gas then what else come on come on the medical sector sir hospitals and all pharma pharmaceutical yeah you can say yeah that's also huge true what else ha huh? railway service oh, pardon me pardon me so the railway sector no railway sector is not a huge industry it's not a huge industry so technology in, in india in india uh, railways is one of the largest employers but it's not world level it's not a big industry largest industry someone said yeah what is that other people were saying some things so electronics yes it's not electronics you have to say uh, yeah semiconductor electronics you can say that yeah semiconductor industry electronics industry yes service sector sir service sector exactly what do you mean service sector maybe consultancies and all i mean yeah yes you like price waterhouse coopers there are big companies that are there in consultancy and other service sectors yeah yeah sir information information it services yeah it services is yeah it's it's also big it's also very large infrastructure infrastructure yes infrastructure is well. the banking sector tourism i don't know banking you can say yeah banking you can say tourism i don't know whether it is we're coming under that huge of a scale but anyway so you you can have idea of there are several large industries that kind of affect the world economy very severely so automobile industry is certainly on the top of the list one of the world's largest economic sectors by revenue very very huge automobile industry because the associated subsidiaries are large in number just if you consider one automobile the kind of industry spin offs that it can have and the support can you tell me one company which doesn't uh, build any automobiles by itself but it has its presence in almost every automobile volkswagen ah uh, volkswagen is building volkswagen also builds its own cars i'm saying they are not building their own automobiles but then they are almost in every automobile Volkswagen builds its own cars. So, like any company? Uh, yeah, whatever. Tell me which company. Tell me one company. Huh? MRF. MRF. Okay. MRF is not. Yeah. MRF. You can say tires. Yes. MRF is not building its own cars, but they are found in many of the vehicles. So. You, 
what is mrf is one you can say that but there is some so, there is one very popular huge company bosch yes bosch bosch has several of its components installed in many of the uh, leading automobiles but they don't make their own cars bosch has no car i, I don't know do any one of you know bosch makes its own car anyone has any idea whether bosch makes a car by itself no so you people are searching probably you can search and tell me whether bosch has its own car so far but the idea is bosch is such a huge company and a large part of their uh, what you call revenue is from automobile sector because they make so many components for automobiles so in that sense automobile industry is huge by revenue right they support many other sector as well so now moving on to classification of automobiles right so i mean the classification that i have shown here on the slide is only limited the, it's it's not exhaustive list but you know you can uh, try to classify the automobiles on different basis so if you try to classify the automobiles on the basis of its purpose for, for what purpose it is used you can say it as passenger vehicle or goods vehicle or special purpose vehicles so passenger vehicles you know the regular passenger cars buses uh, and so on what do you mean by goods vehicle trucks you know and so on what do you mean by special purpose vehicles two trucks yeah special purpose vehicles what are special purpose vehicles sports cars sports cars okay what else jcbs oh. yes jcbs very good jcb is a company you know <laughs> jcb is a company tell me what the vehicle is called as cranes earth move earth movers earth movers exactly they are called as earth movers so you should know because you know this jcb somehow uh, the company name has become synonymous to those vehicles it's not called as a jcb it's it, they are called as earth movers so there is another place where we use company name as synonymous to the comp to the product what it is there's one another uh, instrument we can say we use the company name to call it but the instrument is not the name of the instrument is not that so when you say jcb it's not jcb it's actually earth mover so same way there is another instrument where the name of the company has become synonymous with the product what is that there are many but can you say one more which is very popular what is it uber no no it's not uber. you are telling uber uh, the company name has become synonymous with the a taxi paruki hashir paruki is that what you mean to say no uber is not that popular yet i mean uber is popular but people can even still call it as a taxi or something like that but there is something which you people do a lot when you are on campus you know with respect to your xerox exactly xerox xerox is the name of a company xerox corporation xerox corporation is name of company i don't know how many of you know xerox corporation is just name of a company it's not name of the machine what is the name of the machine what's the name of the machine photocopier it's called as a photocopier exactly so when you say i want to make a xerox copy of a sheet for example you know a xerox copy of a sheet it's not xerox copy it's called as photocopy please take a copy of this or please take a photocopy you know but then the name of the company has become so synonymous with the machine itself we started calling it as a xerox copy because you know they introduced it and they popularized it so much right so same way jcb is not the name of the vehicle the name of the vehicle is an earth mover there is another big company which is very popular in making uh, 
working worse. Which one? Caterpillar. Caterpillar, yes. Caterpillar. So those are special purpose. For example, forklifts, which are used to shift um, boxes from one place to other or goods from one place to other cranes and so on. These are special purpose vehicles, earth movers, right? These are special purpose vehicles. So depending on the purpose, on the basis of purpose, you can classify automobiles as either passenger vehicles or goods vehicles or special purpose vehicles. And depending on the capacity, you can classify them as light motor vehicle and heavy motor vehicle. How many of you are licensed drivers in this class? Raise your hands. Three, two, seven, eight, nine, ten. LLR. Oh, still LLR. Why? Karthik says still LLR. Now only you have got your LLR. Why? Slowly you are learning. Yes, sir. Good. So, so many of you are having license. So, what is written in your license? Can someone take your license and read what is written? You are allowed to drive what kind of vehicles? Light motor vehicles, I guess. Light vehicles, yeah, heavy vehicles. What is written there on your license? So a heavy vehicle also it is written heavy vehicles? No, sir. There no, was only light. Permits. What what do they write on the how is it written? It is written as LMV. LMV, sir. It is written as LMV, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. LMV means light motor vehicle. So you should know. LMV means light motor vehicle. So on your license, it will be written LMV. That means you are permitted to drive only light motor vehicle. So if you say that I have my license and if you sit inside a truck and if you start driving, you will be penalized. So for trucks and buses, you should get a separate license. That is for HMV, that is heavy motor vehicle. Right? So based on the capacity, Broadly, they are classified as light motor vehicle and heavy motor vehicle. There can be other classifications as well, but broadly these two, light motor and heavy motor. And of course, if you go for fuel used, based on the fuel used, if we have to classify automobiles, all of us know this, petrol, diesel, electric, hybrid and steam carriages. Of course, steam carriages is about trains. We are, steam carriages were there, steam uh, powered gas buggies were also there. But they are almost obsolete now, right? We don't have steam carriages anymore, at least on road, we don't have them. Now, if we have to classify automobiles on the basis of number of wheels, you know, two wheelers, three wheelers, four wheelers, six wheelers, and so on. There are even more than six wheel trucks. So trucks and buses are six wheeled vehicles. You guys know that, right? There are six wheels. There are six wheels there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are four in the rear and two in the front. Right? Then, of course, we have uh, the type of drive. On the basis of type of drive, you can have single wheel drive, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, and six wheel drive. You can have front wheel driven, rear wheel driven, or all wheel driven, left hand and right hand drive vehicles. So now tell me, what do you mean by uh, uh, all the passenger cars that we have nowadays, are they front wheel driven or rear wheel driven? Rear wheel driven, sir. All the passenger cars we have nowadays are rear wheel driven. What about the trucks and buses? The answer, sir. They're also rear wheel driven. Sure. So few cars are front wheel driven. So most of the cars are front wheel driven. Most of the cars are front wheel driven. You should understand that. Cars are not rear wheel. Old cars, they were rear wheel driven. But most of the cars that we have now, they are all front wheel driven. Why? Safety measures. Why? What is the safety in front wheel drive? Uh, with rear wheel drive, we can do drifts. Why? I'm just getting old. Hmm? Space constraint, sir. Space constraint for what? Like if we uh, arrange in the uh, for front wheel, we'll be having uh, more space for the passengers to sit in the back. How come? 
So older cars were rear wheel driven. They didn't have space for passengers to sit. Sir, like uh, one of no, the reasons. Is... Yeah, who was that? I, I would like to explore more. You should have a clear understanding of what it means to be a front wheel drive and rear wheel drive. When we say front wheel drive, what it means, and when we say rear wheel drive, what it means. Can you explain? Front wheel drive means what? Sir, uh, like it means uh, the power from the engine is transferred uh, through the differential to the front wheels of the car. Yes. And like uh, the engine is connected to the front wheels. Yes, sir. Rear wheel driven means the engine is connected to the rear wheels. Yes, sir. And all wheel drive means the engine is connected to all the wheels. You guys know any vehicle like that? All wheel driven vehicles. SUVs. Many of the SUVs are all wheel driven. Why do we need all wheel drive vehicles? What's the advantage of an all wheel drive vehicle? Off road conditions. Off roading. Off roading is a terminology. Yeah, tell me what is the advantage of individual power can be sent like in each wheel. Can you give me a scenario where all wheel drive will be useful in off roading also? Why all wheel drive is preferred for off roading? When, when a certain wheel is stuck in the pit. Yeah. Uh, one or two wheels, if they are stuck, if all wheels get power from the engine, it's easier to move the vehicle because you will have traction in at least some of the wheels. Right? So please carefully understand front wheel drives were uh, considered for several reasons. One is traction, other one is easier to connect the engine to the wheels. You need not have a separate transmission line, which is very complex, you know. And you get a good traction because there is weight in the front and you can get good stability and stuff like that. You get good traction on the front wheels. And there are advantages of rear wheel vehicles also. You can see that. What are the advantages of rear wheel driven vehicles? And what is this left hand and right hand drive? In India, what we have? Is it left hand or right hand? Right hand, sir. It's right hand. Because we have to keep left on the roads. So you have a right hand drive. Right? All right. Um, that's it. So these are these are this is these are the classification of automobiles. Now moving on to the different components of an automobile, right? So let us start from the heart of the vehicle that is engine or the prime mover or you can call it as the power source then we have power train or you can say the transmission system what it does it carries the power from engine to the wheels then you have suspension system to absorb the shocks and then steering system to navigate and we have braking system to slow down and stop the vehicle then there is electrical system the chassis and the body did we miss any of the systems here so all these eight systems, if you see, and subsystems associated with these, they form the entire automobile. Did we leave upon any of the systems here? Can anyone say, did we leave upon any of the systems here? Electronics. Yeah, the electrical and electronics come together. Yeah, what else? Safety. Huh? Safety. Yes, safety. Oh, that's good. Safety system is not included here. That's a separate system. That's true. Safety is not included here. Yeah. We do have safety systems. Yes. But you know, automotive safety comes as part of the vehicle body. It comes together in the vehicle body for information. Yeah. Anything else? Did we leave out something else? So if you look at an automobile, it is made of all these components put together. So the entire course will be on going through the details of each of these components, each of these systems and subsystems or the components associated with these systems. That's the entire course. So this course is more or less descriptive and there are a lot of conceptual things and principles of operation that will be coming in the picture. So the more we are able to understand and appreciate how these systems come together and function together, our understanding of an entire automobile will be better and better.
So, uh, I, by chance, any of you are there on campus? Is there anyone who is there on campus? Yes, no. I think nobody is there on campus, right? Fine. So, but still, am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay. Yes, sir. Sometimes you guys are so mute. It's actually, there is no one, sir. We're waiting for know. anyone to say yes. <laughs> okay. Good. So, if you people had been on campus, I would have taken you to our lab. We have a cut section of an automobile. It's, it's good to see all the. Sometimes I can arrange for a video lecture. I don't know how to do that. Is is anybody from Varangal? Anyone in the class are they from Varangal? Vaishnavi is here. That's good. So if if possible for you, you know, if if you people Vaishnavi is there, and if there is anybody else, if you guys can come over to the campus, I know I, you, uh, we can kind of do a video lecture, you know. That can be done, right? A live video presentation of. Uh, can we do it on Google Meet? Is that possible? Or should we do it on some other platform where you can see the video very clearly? Where if somebody is holding the video, you know, taking the video, I can explain the model. It will be nice if some of you can come here and do that. I can show you the different sub subsystems and the models that we have here. So Vaishnavi, if possible, you'll be able to come. Where are you from? Vaishnavi? Badapalli. Oh, yes, she has written it in the chat box. I didn't see that. So it's possible for you to come down here, right? OK, so we'll see. We'll see if there is an opportunity. We will see if a certain lecture can be arranged as a video tour or something like that. You know, I can record it, but I would like to keep it live so that there can be question and answers and there can be discussions and so on. So I have to explore the possibility of that. And some of you should be uh, able to help me. I need your help for how to do it better. Okay. Please give your inputs on how such a session can be done better. I'll be looking for inputs from you guys. So now moving forward, you know, we all know this is engine. I'm just giving a pictorial representation for you to just have a recap of how the engine looks like. There are hundreds of components in an engine, if you look at, and all of them are done with high precision and uh, they have to function with proper timings and with proper tolerances. So very important. This is, you know, we're talking about uh, IC engines. It can be either petrol engine or diesel engine. But we also have now motors, electric motors, which are run by batteries. So those are not explicitly shown here. But I'd be handling some part of electric vehicles separately in this uh, course. OK, so only slowly now we are introducing those topics as well. Then we have uh, the powertrain, the transmission system, which runs from the engine to the drive wheels. Then we have the suspension system, steering system, the braking system, and electrical system, the chassis, which is the framework, the body, the superstructure, right? So this is the overall introduction. I would love to get into the details, but I think as far as today's lecture is concerned, it's good enough what we have covered. Now, I would like to see if there are any questions from you guys, any discussion points. Anyone has any questions? Any questions from today's class? Sir, can you explain about traction? That Traction. Traction is the grip or the friction between the wheels and the road surface. How good is the friction between the wheels and the road surface? That is called traction. So larger is the weight, larger is the force with which you press the wheels on the surface, better will be the traction. If the wheels can rotate on the surface, road surface, without slipping, right? 
with proper rolling, then you have good traction. Is that clear, Avilash? Yeah, fine, sir. If the wheel slips on the surface, then you have poor traction. So there are several factors which will affect the traction. We will go through all that. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, in that case, all the these race cars do they? I mean, do they belong to friend driven, sir? I don't know about race cars. We have to see. Maybe they are all wheel drive. I have to check whether. See, because the traction. Have... No, the traction doesn't just come because it is front wheel driven. There has to be a lot of weight in the front because the engine is mounted in the front. You will have better traction in the front because of the weight of the engine. Not just because the engine is connected to the front wheels, you will have good traction. You understand, Abhilash? Yeah, yes, sir. Sangeet, you had something? Yes, sir. Sir, for say for like sport vehicles uh, which have their engine mounted in the back, uh, say if they are like rear wheel drive, would it be like more efficient or would it be better if they are front wheel drive? No, no. See, there are factors which uh, affect. Front wheel drive and rear wheel drive. Something there's something called a side sway. If all the weight is in the rear and the vehicle is so long, then the vehicle will not have good stability. The weight distribution also should be proper in the vehicle, right? So all that all that is done based on the vehicle stability, the weight distribution, and then only all these things are desired. Okay. You can, in fact, read through the comparison between front wheel driven vehicles and rear wheel driven vehicles. It is not just about, so all, you have to keep this in mind also. It's not about just front wheel drive and rear wheel drive. The position of the engine is also important. Mostly in our passenger cars, the engine is positioned in the front. But there were times where engine was positioned in the rear also. Even now, there are some cars which where engine is positioned in the rear. And based on that also, the decision will be made whether it is good to go for front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone else has any questions? Okay. Meanwhile, uh, you guys can uh, key in your attendance. Yeah. Go ahead, key in your attendance in the chat box. Yeah, you can ask questions. Anyone else has any questions? Any other questions? No more questions. Going once, going twice, going thrice. Okay, thank you. Those who want to leave can leave. See you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll meet Monday, right? Yes, sir.